Hi foxes and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here welcome my name is Brittany and I am known as Shop Foxborough across all the platforms uh, Instagram, Poshmark, Etsy and today I have a what sold video for you so we are going to be going over what sold from the week of April 5th to April 11th and I'm going to be telling you what sold on all my platforms which are Poshmark, Etsy, eBay, and recently I have started selling on Thrilling. So I do these videos every Monday at 8 a.m. so if you like to hear what's sold in the vintage community, um, what is selling for me, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification and I would greatly appreciate having you here on my channel um, and learning more about vintage with me. So from here on out this video is going to be unedited because um, it is just more time economical for me. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and launch straight in to my newest platform which is Thrilling and I only had one sale on Thrilling during that week and it was actually a really good one so I wasn't that upset about it. Uh, so I sold this 1940s plaid beautiful dress with a nice full skirt that I had photographed for my holiday collection in December and someone came in and swooped in and purchased it and it sold for $145 and well I guess on Thrilling it's round number so $146 um, and then Thrilling takes a 10% cut so after that they deposit the PayPal uh, the money into my PayPal account once the item has shipped so um, that is all that sold on Thrilling for last week I've been kind of having this thing where I alternate between like one sale a week and like four or five so it kind of like waffles back and forth but overall for a new platform I'm really happy with it. Um, I am thinking about doing a video about the whole process of onboarding and selling on Thrilling so if you are a vintage seller who is interested in that please make sure to leave me a comment down below. Um, I don't want to do a video that nobody is interested in so just let me know. And let's go ahead and do eBay sales because I know <laughs> there were not many. Um, I have been, you guys gave me some great feedback last week about eBay and just making more sales. And I think ultimately if I want to have success on eBay, what I'm going to have to start doing is to start listing there first and then cross posting over to Poshmark. Um, which is kind of a bummer because it takes so long to list on eBay. Uh, just getting all of those different attributes in. But what I have been doing is going in and searching for the item that I have and then finding one that is either similar or exact and has a bunch of the attributes filled out and then I just sell similar <laughs> and add my own photos in and my own description and so that has been speeding things up a little bit and I am noticing that people are coming and clicking on my listings so that is good. So we will see if sales improve um, over on eBay and if not uh, I will probably drop it but for right now let's see what did I sell last week. So I sold two things last week. One of them was this Michael Michael Kors dress. It was a size 3X. Uh, I paid way too much for this. I think I paid 15 for this at Savers. I was just really looking to make my holiday collection more size inclusive. So I really paid up. Um, if this were like a straight size, I would never pay that much money for a Michael Michael Kors dress. It was new with tags. It ended up selling for $40 with the buyer paying shipping. So, I mean, I still made money on it, but, um, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say that I recommend doing what I did, but it did sell for $40. So if you can find one cheap, then pick it up. 
and the other thing that I sold was just one of my kids old swimsuits so it is kind of swimsuit season people are starting to go down to the beach and um, if you have any swimsuits laying around in your house your kids old swimsuits now is the time to list them and this has been listed for over a year on eBay and it finally sold for five dollars and the buyer paid shipping on that. I have pulled most of my kids listings from eBay and I'm just going to take them into the consignment store because they've been listed for over a year on eBay and I really just want them out of my house. So um, yes but I did sell that for five dollars which is fine I guess. All right, so let's do Etsy now. Etsy has just been taking care of me this year. I really love it. Um, the first thing that sold was this Hiroko Koshino. Um, it was kind of like a yukata, sort of. It was like a shortened robe. It was um, like a, a cottony material. Um, but it was like really rough spun. It was very interesting. I don't know. I pulled it out of the bins and given that I love all things Japanese, I was like, okay, sure. So I brought it home and did a little bit of research on it. Listed it for $44.99 and that is what the buyer paid for it. It did take a little while to sell. I think I've had this listed for... I'm gonna say probably like eight months something like that um, but I mean it sold for a full price no sales so that was that was great and next up this item sold within I think an hour of me posting it it was just like a 90s grunge dress it was a rayon floral dress size um, 1x thereabouts and um, it actually had like a hole in the back of the waist and I thought I might uh, just re-donate it. But I decided to list it for $19.99, disclose the damage, and someone came in and bought it super fast. So I um, was not upset about that. I sold a necklace to one of my viewers on um, here on YouTube. So thank you so much to her. She bought a necklace from Poshmark and then had seen another one in my uh, YouTube video with, it was like an apothecary necklace with like a little lava ball and a tiny jar and she liked it so I gave her a deal on that and she left me some very sweet five star feedback and um, I shipped that out with her posh package. So she paid $10 for that necklace free shipping because I sent it in with her posh package. Next up was this painted floral necklace with like, um, it's like had rhinestones around the center and like a little tassel and it was like two strands. So it was really cool. I got this in my Goodwill blue box so I did not pay much for it but it sold for $21.99 minus a 10% discount that I had on for so they paid about $19.80 for that. <laughs> Next up, it's a really good one. <laughs> so I had a gunny sacks that I had been hoarding for about two years and I figured the time is right to list it. I could have gone ridiculous crazy and listed it for like $500 um, but I just don't I didn't want to um, so the last gunny sacks that I sold I think about two years ago uh, was this one and I sold that for I think two yeah about $200 and uh, the same dress is now listed by a couple of people for like $650 and $1,200. So the prices of these gunny dresses are like skyrocketing. I don't know how long that's going to last, but um, I did sort of take advantage of that. And I listed it for $349.99 and it sold with a 10% discount for about $311. And um, I dug this out of a giant pile at a vintage show. 
I paid $25 for it and I did have to do some spot treatment but it um, was beautiful except for, for a couple of missing button heads on the cuffs right here and so I feel like the buyer got a pretty decent deal for what the gunny market is like right now and I certainly got a good return on my investment so I was really happy with that sale um yeah and it only took about a week and a half to sell The next thing that sold was this large magnolia pin. Like, I just like, I feel like I'm gonna need to edit this because I'm just not feeling it today. Okay, so this large magnolia pin, I got this at the flea market. I fell in love with it. It was so different, unique. Um, it looked just like a magnolia leaf that had been like encased in um, like gold, um, leaf or something like that but it was heavier so it was definitely some kind of metal inside and not an actual leaf but this sold for $37.99 paid five dollars for it at the flea market the buyer got a 10% discount so I trying to do math here I think I made something like $30 on it before Etsy fees Okay, and last Etsy sale, I listed a ton of straw hats that I had purchased from that big estate buy that I did. I mean, I literally came home with like 75 straw hats. This woman had so many straw hats. Um, so I listed a bunch of them that I did not keep. <laughs> and I sold this one to a friend of mine for $33.99 and um, she paid shipping and she bought that the same day that I listed it and then my good friend Laura Von V actually bought two of the hats so uh yeah sold a couple of hats the same day that I listed and I was very happy about that but that is all that sold over on Etsy and we will go over to Poshmark now um let's see my sales been doing this thing in Poshmark where you can now filter your sales by the dates that you are looking for. So I believe it's April 5th to the 11th. Yeah. So I just want to see those. And then it shows me all the sales that were specifically in those dates, which is nice. There are quite a few. Okay. So, first up, we're going to try and go through these uh, pretty quickly because these videos can tend to be long. This Stitch Fix Sienna Faux Wrap Dress, I was actually surprised that this sold. I modeled it, hated all the photos that I took, so I put it on a hanger, and yet it still sold. So $19.20, and then I paid about $5.50 for that, um, so I made somewhere around like $14 on that one. I sold another one of these rattan um, straw bags. I feel like these are everywhere right now, so I wasn't super firm on my price. I paid about $6 for it and sold it for $18. So after cost of goods and everything, I made about 8 bucks on it. So not a great return on investment, but um, I didn't realize how populous they would be when I bought them. Next was a mohair scarf. Um, this buyer was very persistent and so I just eventually ended up accepting their offer of $16. I picked this up at the Goodwill outlet. I had like 10 minutes one day where I popped in with my two kids and I just happened to see it and snap it up knowing that it was mohair. So um, I paid like, I don't know, 50 cents tops for it. and. Um, $12.80 was my take after Poshmark fees, so I made $12 or so on that. And another pair of little kids' Stride Right sandals. Um, if you have any of these hanging around, out around your house, I have sold all of the ones that I had listed at this point. So I sold these for $12. 
My earnings were $9.05. This anthropology dress, I so I had this one listed for $78 and someone came in and offered me $40 and I was like, you know what, before I counter or decline that, let me go and check the sold comps because I know sometimes I can price things a little ambitiously and sure enough, it was right on par. Um, I think the highest that had sold for this color was like $45, so I was like, that's fine. Uh, so I accepted that offer and the earnings after fees and everything was $32. This came from my personal closet, so that was a-okay with me. I also sold this Gal Meets Glam dress. This was from my Stitch Fix palette. I actually got this in one of my Stitch Fixes. Fell completely in love with it, and it was like 200 bucks, so I didn't buy it. Um, and then I got a couple in my palette, but they weren't on my size, so I was super sad about it. I actually ended up buying this dress in my size, so when it sold for $150, I was ecstatic because after fees, it paid for the dress that I purchased for myself. So that was a little bit of a wash, but um, this particular Gal Meets Glam dress, you will see it again next week. Um, I had two of them, so it's a good one. If you see it, it sells for a lot. So this one, I earned $120 after uh, fees. I paid $5.50 per piece for items from my palette. So amazing return on investment from that one. Next was a necklace. This was sort of like, it reminded me of like an Egyptian revival necklace. Also from my Goodwill Blue Box. This one sold to the same person who bought that um, apothecary necklace on uh, Etsy, she bought this for $20, so my earnings were $16. And next was another Stitch Fix item. This was a Cotton Emporium, um, like long sleeve, long gray knit cardigan. Uh, I sold this for $25. I got $20 after fees, and then my cost of goods, so it was about $15. I was very excited to see these go. These were a pair of maternity overalls from my first pregnancy and I have had them listed for I'm gonna say almost two years at this point point. and someone came in and bought them full price no haggling or anything so I was like I just relisted them recently I feel like with maternity items you really need to relist them every three months or so because if you think about it someone is pregnant they go and they like your item and then they don't buy it for three months and so they're definitely not going to buy it because the nature of pregnancy is that your size is changing so rapidly and um then the baby comes so it's like if they haven't bought it within three months then you might as well just relist it but this one sold for 25 dollars. it was mine i got 20 bucks for it super happy about that all right next one was another stitch fix piece this was a little short sleeve um sweatshirt and it said be kind it was very cute but it sold for 16.80 so my take home was probably around like 11 dollars on that one another stitch fix piece someone came in and bought this full price i have been having a lot of full price sales recently and i am not mad about it so this one sold for full asking price $45 and so I got $36 and after my cost of goods I made somewhere around 30 so that was great. This person haggled with me on this skirt like it was just like over a long period of time so sometimes when people haggle with me over a long period of time I'm like okay they keep thinking about it they really want it and I'll like break down a little and give them a deal if they haggle with me but then they never come up on their price like at all then it just makes me mad so this person did come up on their price and we settled on $25 it was a silk slip I got it at the Goodwill bins so I probably paid like 50 cents for it and sold it for 25 my take home was 20 and then after cost of goods probably like 1950 so another full price sale this one i've also had listed for a very long time it was a 
butterfly sweater from like the 1960s really cute the butterflies were embroidered I paid three dollars for this at a little local vintage shop that I like to go to um, and so my take home was thirty six dollars and after my cost of goods thirty three this is one of those things where I mean I guess I would buy it again because it's it was cute and the style was classic but it definitely took a long time to find that right buyer but when they came along they paid full asking price so I really can't complain about that and next up was a pair of Alice and Olivia sneakers these were leather I got this at the Goodwill bins um, I went one time I think last year and somehow managed to race my way to the shoe bin and so I had the shoe bin all to myself so I was able to snag these sneakers and um, given the name I thought that they would do a little bit better I had to clean them up quite a bit and they only sold for $30 and the buyer left me four star feedback and said that the leather was coming away from the sole at the tip of the shoe and I really wish that they had just opened a case and tried to return it because um, I don't want them to be unhappy or have like a defective item but um, I guess they wanted to keep it so I made $24 after probably the $2 I paid at the Goodwill outlet about 22 if I saw those in the thrift store for like five bucks, I totally would not buy them. Another of one of another of my kids pieces. So this was something that I put on my second son Reese. It was a little tea collection shirt with a llama on it. If you don't know, tea collection is a really great brand for children. They have quite a following and this t-shirt did get a lot of attention. Someone came in and bought it. Um, with one of my offer to likers they paid $13 uh, got discounted shipping and so my net earnings was $8.55 which was actually more than I paid for this at a consignment sale so not mad about that um, next up is some goat's milk soap that my lovely mother made for me when I was doing markets and it is strawberry scented it um, is just such a nice soap and I use them in, you know, like I've been using her soaps for years now. Um, but I just have like way too much, like way too much. So I have, I think, six bars of this and I decided to list it on Poshmark. Someone bought it for $7 with a shipping discount. So I only got $2.55 for it. Not a ton. Uh, but if you guys are interested in some handmade goat's milk soap, uh, she got the goat's milk locally. She lived in Oxford. She lives in Oxford, Mississippi. She doesn't make soaps anymore, but it is really nice soap. Um, and I say that as someone who does not like bar soap. So let me know if you want some. Then I sold this J. Crew metallic tank top. It was like a jacquard print. It had or it had like a, um, a scoop neck. It was silk. And I actually bought this from another reseller who was trying to close out her closet and get rid of everything. Uh, for some reason, I seem to like take, I don't want to say like take pity on people who are trying to get out of the game, but I feel like I need to help other people and so I do try to order from them sometimes and usually it doesn't really go that well for me. This took a while to sell and I kind of expected that because it was in a size 2 um, but it did sell for $22. I think I paid $3 for it and so my take home was $13 after fees and cost of goods. Next up is a pair of trouser pants. I went out and purchased more trouser pants because I sold out of all the trouser pants and then I sold out of those trouser pants. So I need to go get more because they are just like selling like hotcakes. These were a pair of tapered leg um, forest green trousers in a size 16, oh no, 18. And um, I paid $3 for these at Savers and they sold for $37. So after like the shipping discount and everything, it was $28 and 10 cents. And then after my cost of goods, I made about 25 bucks on those and they sold within a week. So trouser time, you guys need to go buy some trousers. 
Um, next up, this sold either same day or next day as listing. I listed a couple of cute modern items that I've picked up recently. One of them was this Fever London dress. They sell this brand at Mod Cloth. Um, and they just have this really pretty tulip print on it. It was a size 12 and I had it listed for 36. Someone offered me 30 and I happily accepted. I paid six, five dollars for this at Goodwill and so I made about 19 on it. And that's a pretty quick flip for me, so I'm not upset about it. There's three more items. One of them is this vintage cotton sundress. This was something that I got from the estate buy that I did. Um, it was a two-piece set, but the t the like button-up shirt that went with it was very stained and could not be salvaged. So I just sold the dress. And um, it sold for $36 with an offer, I think with an offer from a buyer. And so my earnings were $28.80. Averaged out, I paid around $10 a piece for all the items that I bought from that estate sale. Um, you know, I got some Chanel and then I got some, you know, just basic stuff. So I made about $18.80 on that dress. Next up was this Zara blazer. I purchased these at Salvation Army for $2 a piece and I've sold all of them except for this one. And uh, this was like my last holdout for white Zara blazer. And they all sold really well. They sold better last year. And then I had two people simultaneously make me a $40 offer. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, whenever I like something now, if someone else makes an offer on it, I get a notification that says, someone just made an offer on something that you like. Don't you want to make an offer? And I'm like, I don't know, do I? <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's what happened with this, but literally back to back, two notifications of an offer for $40. I messaged both of them and I was like, hey, uh, multiple people just offered me $40. Do you, can you go any higher? And then someone was like, I'll give you $42. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I sold this for $42. I paid $2 for it. After fees and costume goods, I made about $31.60. So um, white blazers have historically sold very well for me. So if you see any of them... Um, you may want to consider picking them up. So last item is something that I've had for um, like three or four years. So you have no idea how happy I am that this is gone. It is a vintage Mexican tooled leather handbag. It was like an accordion style. So you pull it open and it had all these different pockets in it. I have it listed for $78. It always got a ton of attention whenever I relisted it. Um, and finally someone came in and offered me $45. I mean, I've sent out so many offers on this bag. It is crazy. I think recently I had it in my 50% off sale on Etsy. Like I just, I'm tired of looking at it. So when someone came in and offered $45, I could not hit accept fast enough. And um, I have no idea how much I paid for it. Um, but I made $36 after fees. So I was just really happy to have it out of my house after all these years. And um, I think when it comes to tooled leather handbags, I would pick up things now with a smaller size, cross bodies, and then more like natural motifs, like anything with um, flowers or mushrooms or leaves or acorns that stuff seems to do really well for me still but a lot of the other stuff is just um, taking more time to sell so I think that if I were to pick up tooled leather bags again that is sort of what I would be looking for and not necessarily this style So what a week. Um, I had a really good sale on Thrilling of over $140 and then I had that gunny sex dress for over $300 and then a number of other, you know, good solid mid-price sales and I feel like my average sale price is certainly on the climb since I really started focusing more and 
buying more vintage and actually not going to the bins. So I've always kind of felt like the bins can sometimes hurt your business because you're just sort of picking up whatever you can find and it's not necessarily curated or an aesthetic. Um, but that return on investment is really good. So it's kind of a toss up. But now my um, average sale price is a lot higher. And overall, I'm just happy with the direction that my business is headed. So that is good. And I hope that you find these videos helpful and you keep your eye out. A lot of you have told me that you're like looking for stuff that I'm selling frequently or that I've mentioned in my videos and then it's selling quickly for you. So that actually makes me really happy that I can help you make money. Um, and yeah, so just leave me any comments down below. Let me know what um, your favorite thing was that I sold and let me know how your week is going. If your April has been good or if it has been slow. So I hope that I'll see you next Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern and I'll talk to you later. Bye.